Hi, I am currently here at PlayStation headquarters in California, here to check out the Access Controller. Let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Steve Saylor, I'm blind and I play video games. To find out how, click here or click the link in the description below. While you're down there, click the like and subscribe buttons. Plus, click the link for my brand new Patreon. If you wanna support my accessibility work and get some cool content, support me at patreon.com slash Steve Saylor. So thank you to PlayStation Canada for sending me out to PlayStation headquarters in San Mateo, California, where I got a first look at the brand new PlayStation Access controller, PlayStation's first accessible controller for the PS5. Now, if you're wondering why I am covering this as a blind player, as this controller isn't really made for someone like me, I do have a chat with one of my friends who was at the event whom this controller was made for. I'll have their thoughts on how the Axis controller feels when she uses it for their needs in a little bit. Formerly called Project Leonardo, the PlayStation Access controller was designed with customizability in mind. It is an adaptive controller that works with PS5s only, and the customizability comes in the form of customizable hardware and software in the PS operating system. It is a circular device with buttons around the edge, a large center button, and a thumbstick on the side. You could swap out the buttons via magnets to attach a different style of button, one with a larger lip around the edge, one that's more smooth around the edge, or even buttons covering two button slots, or even a button that will also be able to press the center button as well. You can even swap out the thumbstick from one that feels like a larger DualSense thumbstick to a smaller thumbstick, or even a large arcade style ball thumbstick, which actually is more of a thumbstick or is it a joystick? At that point, I think it's probably more of a joystick, right? Anyway, uh, the thumbstick can extend outward and lock into place. There are also four headphone style jacks to connect any of an array of buttons, switches, or pedals that a motor disabled player may probably already have as part of their gaming setup. When designing this controller, PlayStation actually sat down with organizations such as Able Gamers, Special Effect, and Stack Up, and several consultants in the industry whom I actually got to talk to at the event. Shout out to Paul Lane and Cesar Flores. They were really cool to be able to chat with them. They helped PlayStation with the core pillars of what they wanted to accomplish with this controller. I sat down with Alvin Daniel, Senior Technical Program Manager at PlayStation, and who was in charge of the Access Controller Project, or Project Leonardo, to find out what those pillars were. So, why don't we start with the, the DualSense, um, and effectively, with any game system, this is a critical link in the chain, in the sense that this is how you express your intent to the game system where your character is running, what actions you're taking, uh, where the game camera is pointing. And if for whatever reason you have challenges using this controller, then that's going to be magnified when you try to you know, get yourself immersed in the game. So the Axis controller in particular is designed to help players with three specific challenges that they might have interacting with the standard controller. The first is, uh, you can see I'm holding the controller, is we want it to decouple holding from music. So the access controller is designed to lay flat. You can put it on a table, you can put it in a wheelchair tray, um, you can put it in a lap board. It's designed so you don't need to hold it to use. Mm -hmm. uh, uniquely, you can orient it 360 degrees. There's no preferred orientation uh, to the access controller, which also means that you need to tell us which way is up. When you push four on the stick, uh, it's going to have a different meaning if you have it oriented this way versus this way, for example. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, the second challenge we wanted to help address was making it much easier to press buttons. So on a center controller, you may notice the buttons uh, for some players are too small or too densely clustered. They're also organized on two different planes and that could be a challenge to interact with simultaneously or in rapid sequence. With the axis controller, you notice we have the button caps. Um, they're much larger, much easier to hit. Um, uniquely, they're customizable, physically customizable. You can just pop off a button cap uh, as a controller kit. It comes with a wide variety of different bunch shapes and different sizes and textures. Uh, so feel free to experiment to customize make the controller your own. A uh, clever system of magnets makes it easy to pop it back on. And we've organized all the buttons in a single plane, like a keyboard. So everything is visible, um, everything's in a single plane, fits the palm of your hand and gives you much greater flexibility in interacting with the buttons. Okay, the final app element that we wanted to help address is the thumbsticks. So in a center controller, you'll find that the thumbsticks are fixed more or less uh, in, the, in a given height, given orientation, uh, given width, 
Uh, and you need a very specific hand geometry to be able to interact effectively with the sticks. And if for whatever reason you find that challenging, what we've done with the access controller through a, a new feature we, we've added called Collaborative Views is you can actually pair this controller with a DualSense, you could pair it with the second access controller, and now you have really greater flexibility in positioning thumbsticks. So you, they can be as far apart, as close together, different orientations, different levels, um, you know, mounted by the side of your head. Um, tremendous flexibility in how you want to have the left versus the right stick. When it came time to demo the controller, one thing PlayStation wanted us to try was the packaging as they invested in not only making the packaging look really nice, but also made it possible to open the entire box and access everything inside with one hand. The controller comes with all the buttons and the styles of joysticks you need to customize the access controller as you need it. But they also partnered up with Logitech to create a similar adaptive kit that Logitech made for the Xbox adaptive controller. PlayStation didn't have any details as to when or how much the kit would be available for, but they did say that that will be announced soon, potentially actually by the time that this video is posted. So keep an eye on the PlayStation blog for more details. When I got my hands on the controller, I was amazed by the engineering of it all. It felt great to hold and push the buttons. As Alvin said, it is designed to work alongside a DualSense or another Axis controller or different combinations of up to three configurations. That functionality is essentially a version of Copilot that you may have seen on Xbox. Both PlayStation and Xbox can now allow multiple controllers to connect to the console and act as one controller together. This brings me to the second major half of the equation, and that's the software included in the main controller settings menu in the PS5 system. You have many options to customize controller, but can create up to three profiles that will save three different control schemes that are easily switchable via the profile button on the controller itself. After connecting the access controller, controller to your PS5 and going through an extensive setup that will show you how to use the controller and how to customize it, you'll have access to the access controller's options, which can control how a controller is oriented, remapped, and even special functions such as simultaneous press and button toggle. Simultaneous press allows you to remap two buttons on the DualSense controller together so that when you press it on the access controller, the game thinks you are pressing two buttons at the same time instead of just one. A great example of this is in God of War Ragnarok. When you go into rage mode, you have to press L3 and R3 together to activate it. On the access controller, you can set the simultaneous press to both L3 and R3 and make that one button push, and the game won't know the difference it'll think you push those two buttons separately. This is really cool. Now, granted, you either have to have use the DualSense controller or another controller setup to run together to have you to use those buttons separately or remap L3 and R3 to a separate button press on the access controller, as sometimes L3 can be sprint and R3 could be moving the center camera towards a waypoint, but it is great to be able to see company try multiple actions per button. Let's hope more customization is coming in future software updates to make that a little bit easier. Another great feature is you can individually set any of the buttons to a toggle or a hold and vice versa. So when playing a game, if you have to hold a button and there's no option in the game itself to set that hold to a toggle, you can set the toggle button to on for that button press. All you have to do is push the button on the access controller once and the game will think you are holding that button. But there was one issue I found. If a game has an option to set buttons from toggle to hold and vice versa, you have to enable that option in the game as well for it to work on the access access controller. I tried to do this in God of War Ragnarok as well, where you have to rapidly tap square to finish a quick time sequence, and it didn't work right away until we figured out you have to go into this menu option in God of War to toggle it, and then also set it in the PlayStation 5 options, and then it worked like a charm. It's the only time where two accessibility options conflicted with each other, which causes a good problem to have because we've never really had seen this before, but this feature is great for any time a game doesn't have that option available. Now, there were some common questions I had seen from the community that I wanted to get some answers to, such as, can you use the Axis controller on its own, or do you have to have a DualSense connected to make it work? And the short answer is yes, but with a sort of attached. <laughs> the longer answer is yes, you can use it on its own. During my playtime, I could try out Gran Turismo 7. PlayStation had set up a control profile for the game for me to try, and you can navigate and race through all of my experience with the game using just the Axis controller itself 
itself. I didn't touch the DualSense controller once. And the sort of answer attached is that it's only possible if a game has a simplified control scheme that doesn't need all the buttons on the DualSense. The Axis controller alone can only remap to nine buttons, including the center button, and one joystick to a DualSense's 15 buttons and two joysticks with both sharing an unmappable PlayStation button. As Alvin said, it's as if they cut the DualSense in half and put it on the Axis controller. Now, yes, you could buy a second Axis controller to cover the rest of the buttons, but you do already get a DualSense with your PS5, so you already have a second controller to connect to the PS5 to work together as one. Again, it's not the exact solution. It's not a perfect solution for all, but this is something that they did make uh, make clear that they just want to make it customizable that can work for as many people and be adaptable to as many people as possible. It does bring up one thing as well that they did make clear when I talked to Alvin about it, and that was the form of transparency. We wanted to create a controller, a controller, uh, something that worked out of the box from day one that you could adapt and configure. Uh, that was as broadly impactful as possible. Uh, and so the way we went about that was, you know, first of all, we had to recognize with all of your humility that there's no kind of magic bullet, uh, silver bullet that's going to, you know, solve every possible uh, accessible challenge that exists. Mm -hmm. But to the extent that you have uh, challenges with those three specific areas, you, you have difficulty holding the controller, you have difficulty pressing or discriminating accurately between buttons on the controller, or you have difficulty interacting with thumbsticks, we believe this can help. Another common question I had seen was, how does this compare to the Xbox adaptive controller? Now, PlayStation didn't have a direct quote or give me a specific answer to that, but after trying it and talking to some folks at the event, not necessarily from PlayStation, uh, we actually had concluded that the two really can't be compared to each other. One isn't even trying to compete with one another. The main difference between the two is that the Xbox adaptive controller is more of a hub with its ability to connect multiple inputs to act as one controller. In contrast, the Axis controller is more like a controller in that it is an additional accessory to help make the current PS5 playable for the disabled audience, especially for those who cannot use a DualSense. So one isn't better than the other, it just has two different use cases. Okay, so that's kind of my general thoughts. So let's now chat with one of my good friends, Kennedy, AKA Dynamic Reacts, who was at the same event in California with me as she was covering the Axis controller for IGN. I'll actually have, we'll have a link to her IGN article and video when it goes live in the description down below. So let's talk to Kennedy. What did you think of the Axis controller uh, and everything, like tell me everything you loved about it. I I think it's great. I love how you can take it straight out of the box and just go with it. I had like no moment where I was like, I have no idea what to do with any of this. It was just very easy to use either right out the box without changing out any extensions, which I did later just to like get a feel for everything. <laughs> but it's very easy to use. And my mom would have made the comment when I was playing like, oh my gosh, you're sitting up straight because like, Normally, when I'm playing on a regular dual sense, I like lean over. Like, if you watch some of my streams sometimes, you yeah. see I'm out of the camera frame a little bit. I, I watch like, you do that, me. and I'm like, that my neck would hurt so bad just to watch you play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Um, but it kind of rectifies all of that and the way that you can map like two button actions to yes, the same. Yeah. It's so cool. I just love that you can tell that they really put a lot of thought into the controller and mm -hmm. a lot of thought into what feedback they were given. It's so easy to use and any consumer can go and pick it out and not feel intimidated by it. Mm -hmm. So basically when you're like when you're using it, it's like there's no like is there a steep learning curve in figuring it out or is it like kind of like one of those once you configured it it's like set up and play? So I would say I didn't feel and particularly put off by it at all. Like the one critique that we did have was that we wish there was like a second little hole to put the labels in so you could see your labels from like a higher position so that, cause I found myself like turning the controller a little bit to try and remember what my buttons were and mm -hmm. which button was what. But it took me say, when I was playing God of War, after I got to the bear fight, I feel like I had a pretty good grasp on like everything that was like 20 30 minutes maybe oh, okay so 
yeah, I was working with the dual sense and using the um, access controller pretty much free flowy. Yeah. Uh, the, so one of the things that, cause I, that I definitely noticed was that it's it's is de- it is a design to replace the dual sense. Mm-hmm. In a sense, it's sort of like more an extension to the dual sense. Yeah. Um, so, like, how did you feel about utilizing both the access controller and the dual sense at the same time? It felt really natural, actually. I, I thought it would feel weird jumping from one controller to the other, but it felt kind of seamless because I was mainly using I had like main buttons on the access controller so like your combat buttons and all of that and then I just used the dual sense for like camera movement and stuff like that and it felt really natural to just sit there with one hand occasionally to mm-hmm. and play around okay so do you see yourself like being able to like, th- would this be a proper like control that you would use in your like day-to-day gaming setup? Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. So now obviously like, okay, we've been talking about it. I've been in this video. I've been kind of talking about all the cool stuff about it and, and what it can be able to do. But you know, I mean, obviously like it's not a perfect sort of uh, device or anything. Is there anything that you kind of struggled with or anything that you saw that um, that there may be partic- potentially issues with uh, for, for uh, any disabled player? So... The label thing that we mentioned earlier, Mm -hmm. um, there are the different button caps that you can use. Um, I actually ended up using one of those button caps. Um, it's, it kind of looks like a right and left trigger. Yeah. Kind of like sort of extends out into the center of the button. Yeah. 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 I ended up using that, but there was only four of them and there's eight slots on the controller Mm. so if i wanted to use that to get visually my labels up i couldn't do that yeah i wish i wish there was an option to have haptic feedback on it that that was another thing yeah because like in games like the last of us remaster for example i love the haptic feedback yes voices and so like yeah i was so sad when i found out that you can have the haptic feedback on the controller like i understand why Mm -hmm. but like give us a choice to switch it on I didn't even think about that. Yeah, you're right. That yeah. was so was so cool in the dual sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, okay, perfect. Well, Kenny, where will we be able to find you uh, online and uh, and follow on your adventures? Um, Dynamic Reactions on YouTube, Twitch, Dynamic Reacts on Twitter or X, whatever they're calling it now. And, um, <laughs> we're still calling it Twitter. <laughs> yes, we're all still calling it Twitter. <laughs> Overall, after using the controller and seeing how this can benefit folks like Kennedy, This is a step in the right direction for PlayStation, and it honestly truly lives up to their promise with play has no limits, which is really, really cool. I'm really excited for people to be able to get their hands on the PlayStation Access Controller, which if you're wondering, will be available on December 6, 2023, and will retail for $89.99 in the US and $119.99 in Canada. Thanks again to Alvin and Kennedy and the entire PlayStation team for taking the time to sit with me and talk to me and showing me the controller. And again, thanks again to PlayStation Canada for sending me out to this event. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, please, and subscribe as well. And also, if you want to help support me directly so I can do more cool stuff like this, please offer any support you can on my Patreon at patreon.com slash stevesailor. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, I remain obediently yours. Bye-bye.